For us to talk about chemistry, to talk about different substances, we need to define several terms that we will be using very frequently. Those terms are elements, compounds, and mixtures. So, what do we call elements, what do we call compounds, and what do we call mixtures? Elements are the pure substances made of one type of atoms. For example, if I take a piece of aluminum foil, I would be holding in my hand an element because that aluminum foil is made out of only atoms of aluminum. So it's just a huge bunch of atoms of aluminum stuck together and represented as aluminum foil. Or if I take a piece of coal, the coal is made out of a bunch of carbon atoms stuck together. The same can be said about diamond. Once again, atoms of carbon in a speci specific structure, but still all atoms are the same. So elements are pure substances that are made of one type of atoms. And elements cannot be broken down into other substances. They are sort of end of the line. You cannot decompose into something smaller, the atoms of aluminum or carbon or any other atoms. In terms of chemical decomposition, they are end of the line. In science, we frequently use uh, visual models to represent ideas. Here, in these boxes, I will try to represent elements. We defined elements as pure substances that are made out of one type of atom. Here, in this box, I will draw circles representing atoms. And since circles are made of the same color, they will represent atoms of the same kind. All atoms in this box are of the same kind. It means that this is an element. Well, some elements are uh, diatomic elements, such as hydrogen or oxygen or chlorine. So, in their case, we will see two identical atoms uh, connected together with a chemical bond. For example, oxygen, O2, two atoms together. But those atoms of, are of the same kind, so we're still talking about a bunch of atoms of the same kind being together. So, this box also represents an element. And in this box, you can see that I have uh, atoms of different kind. Uh, the element, atoms of diatomic elements connected together, they are not reacting with the other type of element. They are just occupying the same space. So, inside of this box, I have mixture of elements. When it comes to compounds, we're talking about substances that are made out of two or more elements chemically combined. This is important. Those atoms should be chemically combined to, be a com to form a compound. Compounds have constant composition. So, for example, uh, the water, H2O, has one oxygen to every two hydrogens in it, and you cannot increase the amount of oxygen per hydrogen. It always will be the same ratio. <coughs> Compounds can be broken down into the elements or simpler substances by a chemical change. Once again, it is a chemical change that breaking down the substance. For example, over here, molecule of water made out of two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. If we break bones between oxygen and hydrogens, those atoms can be rearranged back into the molecules of hydrogen and oxygen. This is a chemical process. Atoms are rearranged into new substance but it's a chemical change that occurred here and our complex compound H2O was decomposed in its original elements what it was made of initially hydrogen and oxygen this time i want to draw diagrams of two compounds how about carbon dioxide and water i will use black circles to represent carbon and red circles to represent to represent oxygen connected to it here are several carbon dioxide in this box. All of the molecules inside of this box are of the same kind. They have the same composition and they all have one carbon and two oxygens connected together. I represent connection of those, chemical connection of those atoms together by drawing them together like this. So inside of this box I have a compound. It's a carbon dioxide. Now let's deal with water. We will use red circle to represent oxygen and blue circles to represent hydrogens connected to it. Okay, 
all molecules inside of this box are the same of the same kind. They all have the same composition. It means that inside of this box I have pure substance. It's water. Inside of this box I have pure substance. It is carbon dioxide. And inside of this box I want to show you a mixture of those two compounds. Okay, I have several molecules of carbon dioxide in here and I have several molecules of water in there as well. But water and carbon dioxide do not react with each other, not under normal, normal circumstances. So they just occupy the same spa space. They are mixed together, those two gases. So inside of this box I have mixture of compounds. And now mixtures. Mixtures are very frequently confused with compounds. Let's see what the difference. Mixtures are substances that can consist of two or more substances physically combined. This is an important difference. The things that created a mixture were only physically, not chemically combined, meaning they might have been very well mixed, to the point that we cannot say where one part and where is another. But still, each thing that went into mixture retained its original properties, physical and chemical. So the composition of mixtures can vary widely as a result of it because we can add any of the part and then change the composition of the mixture. We cannot do it to compounds. Compounds are fixed in their structure, in their composition, while mixtures can be altered. Composition of mixtures can be altered. Substances in the mixture can be separated with physical processes such as filtration or distillation or just a chroma chromatography. Those are physical ways to separate parts of the mixture. Also, mixtures come in two varieties, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. This time I will be drawing mixtures. How about mixture of element and a compound? Let's say we have oxygen inside of this box and a compound, something made out of more than one type of element. How about carbon monoxide? Okay, inside of this box I have molecules that made out of same uh, atoms, that would be uh, molecules of my element, and I have molecules that made out of two different elements that would be my compound. So inside of this box I have a mixture of element and a compound. And over here I will mix two elements. I will take a gas that is diatomic, something like hydrogen, H2. And here goes several molecules of hydrogen. Two are identical molecules connected to each other. This is just one element. But let me draw another one. This one is monoatomic gas, maybe it's a xenon, and they occupy the same space. They do not react with each other, they just occupy the same space. They were mixed together, but didn't react. They didn't form new bonds. So this over here inside of this box, I have a mixture of two elements. And this last box will be my mixture of element and two compounds. Let's mix over here oxygen, carbon dioxide, and maybe carbon monoxide. So here you can see my element mixed <coughs> with carbon dioxide, a compound, and carbon monoxide, another compound. So inside of this box I have a mixture of an element and two compounds. Alright, homogeneous mixtures. Those are combination of substances that are so very well mixed that they appear to be uniform in composition and properties. So for example air, it's a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen and some other gases such as carbon dioxide, but we cannot really right away tell where is which molecule is traveling. It would dissolve salt in the water, salt disappears and it appear, and it looks like it completely gone and uh, uh, disappeared from the jar, but the water became very salty. The salt is present in there. It's a very good mixture, homogeneous in appearance, 
but still it contains different things that still preserve their original properties. Wine, milk, cup of coffee. Coffee is a uh, cup of coffee is the mixture between water and those molecules that were dissolved in it of the coffee. And in blood, oh my gosh, what is not there? All the antibodies, all the uh, blood cell, red blood cells and white blood cells and everything else that is traveling along the bloodstream. But they are all suspended inside of the blood and we cannot quite separate them, at least not at the first glass, glance. So those are examples of homogeneous mixtures. And when it comes to heterogeneous mixture, it's a combination of substances that is not so well mixed or not so uniform in their composition. It's when we actually can see the parts of each stuff that went into the mixture. So for example, if we mix sand and water, we can probably see where is sand and where is water and orange so is pulp considering that we can see the pulp and juice separately that's a heterogeneous mixture we can distinguish where the parts of this mixture end and another begins chicken noodle soup we can see noodle we can see the broth of the soup and we definitely it's a not a homogeneous mixture it's a heterogeneous mixture Well, since compounds and mixtures are frequently confused with each other, let's see the main differences, uh, differences between the two. So for compounds, composition is constant. The ratio between the things that made up the compound will remain the same. We cannot change it unless we run a chemical reaction. In mixture, thing, the composition can be altered very easily. The ratio of things that went into mixture can be alternated. We can take salty water, put in it more salt, and it will be saltier solution. Thus we alternated the ratio of things that are in there. By no means we cannot do it to a compound. Compound is fixed in its composition. In compounds, substances are chemically combined. It was a chemical process. Chemical bonds were formed between the atoms. While when mixture was created, it was just a physical combination. Things were just put in the same jar and mixed well. That was about it. When it comes to compounds, we can break them down to the elements from which they were created or into simpler substances through the chemical change. But it doesn't take a chemical change to separate things from the mixture. Some physical process such as distillation or uh, filtration will do the trick. 